Hi everyone, welcome to lab 6 of my Introduction to Remote Sensing of the Environment course run in the Google Earth Engine environment. The topic for today is plotting spectral response curves. This is a lab in a series which you can find links to over here and in case you're watching this on YouTube and you can't find the tutorial the link to these GitHub pages is in the video description. The objective of the lab today is to further your understanding of spectral responses and develop skills using the charting functions in Earth Engine. We've had a look at spectral responses before, but we're going to go into a bit more detail. So open up um, Earth Engine and navigate to an area of interest for you. For the last two weeks, we've been using Cairns in northeastern Australia as our region of interest. Um, make sure you clear your script so you're starting afresh and I want you to navigate to your area of interest, it doesn't have to be Cairns, place a point marker on the, nap, on the map and rename it ROI. So we use the teardrop geometry, place it on the map and we rename that ROI. And you'll know from other labs that this uh, stands for region of interest and the reason we're doing that is that we're going to copy in this little bit of code here and what we're doing is we're going to pull one image out of the earth engine image collection and we're going to use the landsat 8 um, tier 1 surface reflectance collection we're going to filter by bounds roi that's our roi over here we've just created. We're going to filter by date, sort the imagery by cloud cover and pull out the first or the least cloudy image. We're then going to add that to the map using map add layer image. We're going to choose the red, green and blue bands with the min and max as shown here and we're going to call our label our, our layer true color image. So we'll copy that in. And if we hit run, if everything's working, we should return an image over our, that intersects our region of interest for the given date range. Um, if you want to know what image that is, we could add the um, print command here. Just say print image. Remember to add your semicolon, hit run. And that'll print that information to the console for us. So we know that this image was taken in 2000, collected in 2016, um, 8th of June. Okay, what I wanted to do today is we've been looking at classifying this image and in the past we've worked with the inspector to click on a particular pixel and retrieve the reflectance values for the different bands. We can look at that in bar chart format too. And this is great, but what's important to remember is that we're only looking at one pixel at a time. If we want to build up understanding of particular land color classes, we need to be able to aggregate that information for many more pixels. So that's what today is about. First, let's specify um, which bands we want to extract information for and which classes we're interested in exploring. Now to do this, we're going to make use of this new rectangle tool. Um, it's only been here for a few weeks. It's a great addition. So we can draw a rectangle. If I click that, under our geometry imports, by default, your ROI will be active. I want you to add three new layers. They will default to geometry, geometry two, and geometry three. And we're going to look at spectra for water, forest, and city. So come up here, change this to water, forest, city. And now you'll see them in the um, little window over here. You could um, change these colors better reflect the 
man cover class. Okay. Now, if we want to sample water, we can draw a polygon over water, forest, and city. Now we've just defined these polygons, um, and we're going to use them to query the underlying spectra for each band. Before we can do that, though, I've put in a little screenshot here. You need to be careful. You need to change the geometry type to feature, and you need to define a label in the properties tab. So the way to get to here is up in the import section on this little settings wheel, the configure wheel. You can click that. We're going to change the geometry to a feature. We're going to call this, um, what did I call it in the script? Just label. And the label be water. We're going to do the same step for each class feature label forest, okay, city feature label city. There we go. Now, um, we've, we've now created our polygons that we want to intersect and, and sample spectra from, but how do we actually do that? Well, first, we're going to copy in this bit of code in which we're going to pull out, um, if we go back to the Inspector tab and click on here, we, you'll see that there's a number of other bands which we might not be interested in at the moment. And we're just going to look at the spectra from blue um, through to band 7. If you need a reminder on what these bands are, we can open up the Landsat 8 information tab. And that's over here. And we can see that band 2 is the blue band. Band 7 is shortwave infrared. Band 6 is shortwave infrared, band 5 is the near-infrared, and band 4 is red. So, when I copy in this bit of code, what I'm doing is I'm creating a variable which is a subset. It's just going to select out those seven bands I'm interested in. And the second line, I'm going to create a variable where I'm joining these polygons that we've created together in a feature collection. So let's run that, check that we don't have any errors, nothing happens, which is good, means no errors. And now we can move on to actually exploring this. So how are we going to do this? We're going to create a scatter chart. I want you to copy in this bit of code and then we'll discuss it. I'm going to paste this in here. And now I'm calling up, if you go into docs, um, you'll find a number of different options for charting. You, it's pretty powerful, the, the range of charting options available in, in JavaScript. So we're creating a variable, chart1. We're going to use this line here, um, chart image.regions. We're going to sample the variable subset and we're going to query it based on samples which we created here. We're going to use a reducer to return the mean spectral value per class per band based on the label that we've given. So we, when we were up here defining labels, we've defined three labels and that's what this is going to use. If we want to see our chart, we need to print it. So print chart one. Let's hit run and see what happens. You can see we're generating the chart here and very nice. We get the reflectance values plotted out per band, per land cover type. And looking at this, it makes sense. Um, red is forest in the so this is ultra blue, 
blue, green, red. Very low reflectance, lots of absorption, chlorophyll absorption in the um, visible, so very low reflectance. But we jump up to here, so a high reflectance in the near infrared, and then it drops away again in the short wave infrared. The blue is water, so we have a little bit of reflectance in the visible, but as we get to the near infrared and short wave, there's absolutely no reflectance. City. Um, it's not quite what we'd expect from a pure urban impervious surface environment in that there's still some reflection but there is a level of absorption in the visible um, and in quite high reflectance in the near infrared but if you look at our actual city polygon this is quite a green urban environment there's lots of trees mixed up in there so that's a very nice tool remember we can also click on this little icon pull up the graph in a bigger form. We have the option of downloading the underlying data or exporting it as a vector or raster um, image. Now this is great, um, but what if we want to improve the look of this chart a bit? Uh, this gets a little more complicated, but you can reuse the script over and over again. And I pulled this one from the um, Google Earth tutorials and it's really nice in that what it is is defining some customization options it's creating a variable called plot options where we can specify certain attributes of our chart for example if we want to give a more meaningful title we can add in here Landsat 8 surface reflectance spectra we can give titles to our horizontal and vertical axes. We can define our line width and our point size, and we can specify the color that we want to plot um, the different um, land cover types as. For example, here we have forest in red. We might want to put that in green, for example. So that's what I've done here. I've made water blue, forest green, and city red. Now, the complicated well, a somewhat complicated step is that what we have here are the band numbers. If we want to actually plot this out by band, by, by wavelength, um, then we need to define what those wavelengths are. And that's what this script is. We're defining a list of wavelengths for the x-axis labels. How do I find out that information? I come back here. I know that band one falls in the 435 to 451 nanometer range. Here are the values for band two, band three, band seven. They're represented here in micrometers. I tend to use the nanometers. What that means is that if we copy in this little piece here, can define a list of the wavelengths to use on the x-axis label so we can make a continuous x-axis with the actual wavelengths if I copy this piece enter it here now we can rebuild our chart. We're going to just print another chart below this one. So we're going to call this chart two. This part is still the same. We're using image regions. We're using the mean reducer. The type is scatter plot, but set options. We want to call up plot options. And that's what we did over here. When I hit run now, you'll see that we're generating two charts. And the second one is actually very nice. Um, we've now got our wavelength in nanometers on the x-axis. We have our mean reflectance values per band, per class, and we've joined them with a line. That allows us to look at the shape of the curve more easily. And the pattern is the same as what we discussed before, but the colors make more sense. Similarly, we can pull that up if we wanted to change the thickness of these points. We could do that just by altering our chart options over here. 
Um, what's really nice about this approach is if we have a look at that chart there, and I said that, for example, city, there's a lot of green. We could see what happens if we make this smaller. And for example, if I was to move this over an area like that and run the chart again, we can look at how we get much higher reflectance coming off there. So we don't get that level of absorption that we did the first time around. So a very useful tool for learning about how different land cover types interact with um, energy coming from the sun. So I hope, that, hope you find that useful um, and that you can use that to understand how different surfaces reflect and absorb light. I'll see you next week. Thanks for your time. Cheers.